everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Inside A Gamer, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 with my tutorial series. And today we're looking at Navigraphs. Now I haven't done much on Navigraphs yet, and some people have asked me in previous uh, videos about Navigraph. Now Navigraph is a great kind of add-on uh, feature. Now it is a payware, but I think it is something that is quite important for flight sim, especially if anyone's using multiple flight simulators like X Plane and stuff um, with the air act cycles. Once that's introduced to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, this is definitely the perfect program for you now what i actually want to do with this today is show you that you can actually create flight plans with this as well so it's not just about the air rack cycles making sure the uh, the mac do's and the fmc's are up to date uh, it can actually create flight plans for microsoft flight simulator 2020 as well so i'm going to show you a few of the basic features of it and if you guys like this video and uh, want to see more in-depth video i will do that later on down the line okay so starting off you can see here we've got this at the world map now we can change this to many different things up here uh, we can do our low m route so you can see all the airways these are the low airways around the world and this is the area that we're looking at obviously the united kingdom and ireland and you've also got the high routes so you can see all the high airways as well uh, these will come in handy a little bit later but for now we are mainly just going to be looking at the world map okay if we come up here you've got a couple of things you've got favorites and flights uh, this is opening up your account. You actually this actually connects to Simbrief. If I was to do a plan on Simbrief, I can preload it onto here. So if I go down to here, you're going to see all my prior flights that I've done, and you can see that if I clicked on any of them, it would bring it up from Navigraph. But what we actually want to do today is create a new flight. So look, you can bring in from Simbrief. Uh, you can load one up from a file, or we can manually input. Now, the reason why you might use this with Simbrief is if you wanted to change your SIDs and stars, I use this sometimes when I'm not not particularly a big fan of the uh, the approach, maybe, or the, uh, or the exit from the airport. I will use this and find the one that I want to use. Okay, so we're going to manually input. So you've got the airline CEO or standard IFR. We're just going to use a standard IFR. Today, we're going from EIDW, our favorite Dublin International. And uh, we will be going to EGKK, which is Gatwick. Now, the reason why I'm going to use these two is because I tend to use them a lot in my videos, so it'll all make sense. Uh, we don't need to put an alternative in. Now, we can do an auto-generate the route. That's something that we can do. Or we can just create and create the whole route ourselves. So if we were to just auto-generate the route, it'll give you a couple of options. If you want a low airways or high airways. Now, depending on the altitude, usually we'd use high airways. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. You can pick either and it will create a route for you as easy as this There we go, so we have our first route uh, Which has been automatically done by the simulator, but it is missing a few things you can see these dotted lines This means the route is not a hundred percent yet So there's a few things we can do here now now first of all We're gonna go up to Dublin because this is our departure now up here in Dublin We have a few options up here So you can see all the different runways we have in Dublin and we can also see all the departures that we have in Dublin. Now, if you come up to the top here, you can see this is the actual route. These are the airways in grey. These are the waypoints in blue. If we click on Dublin, we can open the charts list, which was already open on the side here. Shut that down for a second. And there's a lot of charts here. You've got your stars, your apps, your SIDs. Now, if we go into the taxi, what we actually want is the airport chart. And here we go. So this is how I use my charts for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. People do ask me what charts. These are where I get all my charts from. Now, these are kept up to date. Now, you can actually connect this to the Flight Simulator, and I use this, and there'll be a little pink arrow, and as you're going around, uh, you can see yourself making sure that you're using the correct uh, taxiways. So if they're asking you to use certain taxiways for certain runways, I can see all the runways here. There's 34, 16, 10, and 28. Um yeah, now that'll be another tutorial later down the line. I'll show you how to connect Navigraphs to the actual flight simulator. So here we go. This is quite a good chart. So what we can do here, there's a few options. What we want to do is just add that to our pin board. And that's going to come on down here, down below. That's good. So we can cancel that for a second. Now, the reason why we can bring this up is because we can actually overlay this if we wanted. Now, it's not the best. Uh, it won't zoom in enough at the moment. But there we go. There's the actual airport charts. You can see the runways. Um, and we can see that we want to take a more direct route out now We go back up to here runways and departures So we could automatically just say we want 10 right and we want it will only give us the ones that will work from 10 right um, You know, so you say that and look there we go. There is our route 
not ideal. It's not the, the best route out of Dublin. Um, but there's a way that we can check our SIDs and stars. There is a way to do this. Now, here we go. These are all the SIDs out of the airport here. But this is what we want to be looking at. So we know if we were going really far south, you know, the PESI 2E might be good or the Beeper 2E might be good. Um, but, you know, we're going out this way. So realistically, we want the Liffey or the Dexy 2E. They're the two routes that we want. So this little I button here shows you all the different uh, SIDs. And you can kind of look. So like Navigraphs might give us this one here, the Beeper 2E, and then bring us back up. You know, it doesn't make any sense when we can have a direct departure. And that's kind of what we want. As you can see here. So... We want the Dexy 2E really, that's probably the one we're going to go for. And it's going to tell you basically what runways you can go for with the Dexy 2E. And that means we need to go from runway 10 right. And there we go. Now this little waypoint has just been added in here. Okay, so there we go. So we have got the 10 right departure. We're taking the Dexy 2E and that's going to bring us out here. Now there's actually another thing we can do here which is pretty cool. If we go to our stars and we find the Dexy 2E. Which is here. It actually brings up this chart as well now so we can actually see the SID actual chart and we can see here what it wants us to do now what we can do here now is uh, pin this which has already been pinned down here and we can overlay that so here we go here is our route and now we can actually put our charts here so we can see what we need to be doing the flight level 12 1 2, 0 by here etc etc or if we were to go out through the other runway 28 we would take the 1a and this will bring you on to the same. These charts are very, very good. And it also gives you, if you've got any restrictions, that you've got max 250 knots below flight level 10,000, etc. Um, all your radio kind of frequencies and stuff. Pretty, pretty good. These are very handy to have. And I can just stay there. So I can leave this on my other monitor while I am doing my, uh, my, my stuff. And I can just bring this up very, very quickly. They're pinned to the boards here. Really, really good. Now we can see the rest of this is fine until we get down to Gatwick. Now once we get down to Gatwick, we have the same thing now. So we can look at arrivals. Here are all our arrivals. And we can look at all our approaches. Now we only have our nav 08 left for this one. Okay, so. But we can pick our, so say if we want, you know, an ILS landing, we can do a direct run to runway. Uh, if we want to do an ILS, we can pick a transition. So, you know, say uh, Willow is generally one that we would use. Uh, and then that will start bringing you up your approach. Private wise, again, look, we've got to look where we're coming from. So we're coming from Astra 2B. Um, so it would be Willow 3B is pretty much the only one that we're going to use here, which is down here, the Willow or the Astra. We could use Eva. Now the willow obviously brings us up and around, uh, as you can see here. So this is probably be the best one to use, and so does um, the Astra 2B as well. It doesn't really make a difference. We could choose either one of these. So we know that that's basically going to be what we want to do. Now again, if we were to go click on Gatwick, if we go up here to our flight plan, and we go all the way across to Gatwick, we can now open our charts list. We can look at our approaches here. So you know, if we were doing an ILS. Or I don't know which one we went in for. ILS 26 left. We come down here. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we can use here. So here is our runway for ILS. Obviously, this is the Willow. We leave Willow at 4,000 feet, and then we would come in here. Final approaches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This gives us all the, the information that we need. So it's got some other things here. So we got you know 258, 110.9 would be our ILS for landing. Uh, you got a few other things here as well. Gatwick Towers, your minimums, etc. Your transitions, altitudes. Um, so these are very, very handy. And again, what we would do here is pin this to our clipboard. And we would exit. So if we want to, we can overlay this down here. And you can see this is the approach here. So we know that this is going to work. Um, so I can leave this up. So once we come off the transition here. I can keep an eye on where I should be at what point, which is uh, perfect for the ILS landing. So we need to be at 2,000 feet by D8.5. That's what they would say. So we know that we need to come in pretty, pretty low. We leave Willow at 4,000. So once we're at the end of Willow, 
we would then descend back down further to again 2000 up here it would be at 4000 at mayfield and then we would descend into our final perfect these charts are very very good like this so again for our rivals like i said we have the visuals we know that we're probably going to take the willow 3b and again because we're going into ils 26 because we've already picked that there's only given us the two we only have astro or willow which we know so we'll click on willow and you can see there there's a bit of a jumble that won't happen it's just the way it is but there we have it we know that the willow will take us in here so we know that we have a full route and again like i said you know we can click on all our charts that we've brought up that we might need and also another chart that we might want if we go into that is our taxi chart so we probably want an airport chart which we're just going to find here there we go airport info takeoff and minimum so here we go this will bring up gatwick airport and we can see here all the little bits and pieces that we would need to have and again i would use this then once we come in so we were coming in on 26 left so we'll come in here probably come off at fr or gr and then again we'd have to be careful crossing runways uh, and then we would taxi all the way down to whatever it asks us to do um into either terminal gate etc etc again what i would do is pin this and then I have all my charts ready for when I need them so that we can overlay that again. They're not very clear, these airport ones. It doesn't zoom in enough, unfortunately. Now, once we've picked the route that we're, we're happy with, once we pick the route that we are happy with, uh, it's very simple at this point. All we would need to then do is save this route and we would load it into the flight simulator. Now, the one thing we can quickly check here as well, we can go into our low routes and our high routes. We can see what we're taking here. You can see all our airways here we go this is why it's decided the route it is taking which is perfect so all we would do at this point then is click on your flight and we would export this to a pln file so you can see here it's got p3d or fsx this is what we're going to go for because um flight simulator 2020 uses plns so we'd use that uh they want our cruising altitude at this point we could pick so say if we only want 32,000 feet and we can now export this now where we would export this to it depends on where you're putting your flight plans but i have shown you in a previous tutorial uh that i have made my own flight plan because i find it easier to just do my own one and i just tell the flight simulator where i want it and if i go in here you can see there's a couple of flight plans we can see there's this one here now we can call it whatever we want uh tutorial and we can just save that in there and there we go there's our flight plan all we need to do then is load up the simulator and we would load in this route and there we go that is that simple so navigraphs is very handy so on the side while i'm taking off and flying i'd bring up my charts like this and i'd be able to see exactly where my aircraft is which i'll show you like i said in a separate tutorial and i can follow my flight throughout the whole of this you'd see it following and again once i start my approach i can start thinking okay look i'm coming into my approach here now what where do i need to be what do i need to do obviously atc will tend to tell you um but you know it's always good to have these things on site as well to be able to read them while you're up in the air and you're getting ready for your descents and stuff these are very good to learn how to read these and there we go there we have it so navigraphs is a very useful tool for many things like i said the air -X cycles obviously is the main one um but like i said i i would tend to use simbrief and if I'm not happy with what they've given me, I load up my sim brief and I may change my SIDs and my stars around and my runways. And then I would program it then into my flight simulator to I get a route that I like and that I want to fly. So there we have it, guys. If you're enjoying this content, please do subscribe down below to the channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications. I upload nearly every single day. And other than that for myself, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.